Hello everybody, welcome back to the workshop. So in today's video, I'm gonna talk a little bit about why it's important to thermocycle your steel. Now, I will go ahead and put out a disclaimer real quick. I am not a metallurgist by no means, nor do I claim to be. I am a blacksmith. And as a blacksmith, I'm always trying to create my own tooling, usually for jobs or uh, different uh, tools that need to be made, specialty tools in-house for specific jobs that I may or may not be doing. So here recently I had to take and do, uh, I've had to make a bunch of more chasing tools to do different types of chasing work and, you know, highly refined types of pieces. And so I need to break out the old spring steel again. So I got some spring steel. It's like a heavy, it's not really a truck or a car coil spring per se. This spring steel happens to be part of a very large commercial garage door, if you will. So it's a big bundle. It's a bundle about that big around, but it's really tightly together. Uh, and it was meant to be torsioned in this direction. So with that being said, I had some pieces that I had made and I said, well, I'll just heat them up once and I'll throw them off the side of the fire and then I'll come back to them and I'll forge them out and that should be enough. Uh, unfortunately it wasn't. I had a few tools that ended up cracking on me and they ended up splitting lengthways of the grain. Now that could have come from too low of heats while forging uh, which is not very likely that it would split in that direction. Usually they'll crack in half if you had too low of heats uh, in you, you've created some stress fractures across grain that way but this ran the length of the piece so that tells me that the material was already pre-stressed long before I actually got to forging it. So what I had to do is as you saw in the opening clip I wasn't over here by the coal forge although you could do it with coal forge just as well I had to take and thermocycle the spring steel three or four really good times and bring it up to a full heat where it would be at say above a critical temperature and then let it cool all the way down to black and then bring it up to a critical temperature and then let it cool all the way down to black. Now gas forge is a great thing for this because you can have that thing running you can bring it up you don't have to worry about pieces falling to the bo bottom of your fire pot and you can just let it and otherwise let it just run. You know you can let it run bring it up to heat shut off the handles let it cool back down to black fire up the gas again it's a really economical way of bringing a lot of pieces of spring steel as I have about 50 different chasing tools that I'm going to be making here in the next future, in the near distance future, that it's a real handy way for me to get a lot of thermocycling done all at once. So that's a big advantage of having a gas forge for that. The main purpose of this video is anytime that you use used materials or found materials, say coil spring off cars, leaf springs off trucks, um, any sort of thing that was used like for drill bits or stuff like that at a, at a previous juncture in life, those tools and those spring steels and those things have developed stresses, a certain amount of stress in them from their previous use. So you have to compensate for that by taking and softening up the material as much as you can and try to relieve as much of that stress as you can and thermocycling does that. So again, to thermocycle something you bring it up to a nice bright heat or where it would be considered non-magnetic and just a bit above that and then you let it cool all the way back down to black to where there's no longer phase change and then you heat it all the way back up again and I suggest doing it at least three times especially if you have a piece if you have a section of coil spring that is prone to splitting on you. So that's it for this video I hope that was helpful for you. Uh, let me know what you think or what you do whenever you find uh, cracks in your high carbon tool steel. Drop that as a comment down the comment section down below. I'd love to hear from you. If you haven't been over to our website here lately, Jessica and I, we've been adding all sorts of new goodies over there. Uh, go check out our blacksmithpdfs.com. Uh, the links for that will be in the description. There's a bunch of power hammer plans and blacksmith cheat sheets and helps to help you run your business or start an Etsy store, things like that as a blacksmith, uh, all catered around blacksmiths to help you guys out out there. So thank you all once again. Hope you like this video. And as always, God bless you, and we'll catch you on the next one.